guy who gets drafted in June and is on the roster by it happens once or twice a year. Yeah, some guy in the first round may or some first, second, third round makes the team, will be on the team in September. It's like what well, usually a college guy because they have enough seasoning to do it. Usually a closer type because all they are are live arms. So you can bring them up. Bryce in September. Harper was one of those. Oh, right? was he well, he's straight I, from I high school. On that but he, point. What's that? Um do you remember the old days when the dinosaurs were roaming around the outfield? <laughs> the ERAs were a direct indicator of exactly how good your pitching team, you know, his staff was, uh, as opposed to other teams. And it really broke down. Remember the old days, St. Louis and every. Yeah. Now, your starter doesn't go. How does your starter go? Five, maybe six? Your relievers now are the majority of the ERA as far as the team ERA. Right, right, they are. Say so, those things. Yeah, exactly. When you think about that, like I said, when only like I said, when the dinosaurs were out there, is you really knew who the best teams were as far as pitching? Because believe it or not, guys, and just sit, hold on to your hand. The pitches actually went seven, eight, or nine innings. Right. I mean, and you're being generous there, saying the seven because they went eight or nine. I mean, nowadays, what six innings is like a quality start mm-hmm. kind of thing. You know, they they even seven was kind of considered it was kind of wussified. You know, it was eight or nine is where, is where they went. Well, you, but you, now they just want five, so you're eligible for the win. You get the W, and then there's others like the Mets kind of have to do with their fifth starter, where they have a guy because they haven't stretched the guy to go all the way yet. Like Lugo went four. He pitched really well, mm-hmm. but he went. four. Four, so he wasn't even in line for the win the other day. And of course, I'm saying win, and he met in the same sentence. But um, uh, he only had four innings, so he didn't go all the they took well, him out. Yeah. What about the Rays have bullpen days? That's so ridiculous. So they just put bullpen guys Two innings, two innings, two innings. And, and here's another thing I heard about. You know how they have a closer? Yep. How about having an opener? What you could do, I mean, because that's the whole. Well, we see we see that in spring training, because in spring training the veterans, old batters, they get one, maybe two at bats. So if you bring in your closer in spring training in the ninth inning, he's not going to face anybody. So a, so usually you take him in the th- second or third inning so he can face real major league hitters. That can be one of the things because what is a, cl- a cl- closer can be used any time. A closer is supposed to be in the most, act, you know. T- Stressful. Most of the time, the eighth, at least. Yeah, the so this is a stressful night. situation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But a stress, st- stressful situation can occur in the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth. The only problem is these closers are now making good money, and now you're changing the whole paradigm of things because their agents are like, whoa, whoa, whoa he's get, he gets money based on number of games finished and saves. saves. And yeah, and so. Well, suppose your closer stinks. Uh, but he's still your closer right. when you bring him in. And these other guys, you know, like Well, that's him up familiar. The they inning. did it yesterday. They brought him in the eighth inning. And, he, and I love these closers who can't pitch in non save situations. It's mm-hmm. like, come on. You, you should be able to pitch in any kind of situation. Which is, But the only reason you do that is it's a money proposition. You could do it with Andrew Miller because he's getting paid. Andrew Miller makes a, a, a good amount of money. So you can use him anywhere because he's already gotten his money. He's getting paid no matter what. So you might as well use him. One thing that was being brought up in the MLB network today is because Gabe Kapler had something to say. But as the manager of the Phillies, the idea of using um, position players to pitch in games and how stupid it is, you know. And then it became a thing, like Brian Kenny was like, "No, it's not stupid." Whatever. Um, in, in this day and age where you have thirteen man pitching staffs, the fact that you have to have a uh, position player pitch in a blowout game is kind of stupid because they could get hurt, and they're not meant to. You know, a seventy five mile an hour fastball being hit over the fence is just, it's not worth it. At least put someone who's in to get some work and let them pitch out there. And then John Smoltz had to say, I pitched for Bobby Cox for 15 years. You know how good our teams were, blah, blah, blah. Bobby Cox never had a position player pitch that entire time because he thought he dis- disrespected the game, which I think as well. So. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, again, that's the old... You know, it, it's funny when you mention managers that actually had, you know... Again, I'm not going to go into the dinosaur world. But have you seen a good fight on ESPN? When I say fight, I'm talking... Uh, you know, manager, umpire, like the old days. And that's his replay. No, but right. Oh, like yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, I mean, play, players. With, yeah, you're not, you know, you can't see with with replay because it's cut and dry. However, there's been a number of plays this week. I've just been watching Mets games that I saw that have been non. Uh, you can't argue. And one got brought up because it was just on June 1st was the anniversary of um, uh, Santana's no hitter slash not a no hitter, and. When his arm fell off? Well, they, yeah, exactly. That's the one. Well, there's a couple of two, two interesting things happened then. Number one, uh, his arm essentially fell. That, that ruined his career. He was done after that. Too many, what, 130 pitches. He was just done. And number two, that Queens product, Malloy High School graduate. Mike Baxter, also the name of Tim Allen's character in Last Man Standing, Mike Baxter went into the wall making that incredible catch and never played again because he ruined his shoulder. 
So it's like it's amazing that game had the effect it had on people. But the story was, you know, everyone's like, hey, it wasn't a no hitter because it, the ball was actually fair. That was Beltrons was actually called foul, but it was fair. Wait a second, it still has lime on it. Yeah. Well, here's the thing: that is a non-replayable right. play. So it still would, even in this day and age, it still would have been a no hitter because it would have that is non non replayable. It would have been seen by the ump as being foul, and that was it. That that call would have stood. Do so, think, do you think that ump still has it in the back of his head somehow? Yeah, well, it's the same thing as with the uh, was it that that no hit the perfect game Armando by that, yeah, who again career never was the same again. And yep. then the other one was I was watching the. Uh, Ninth inning of the Mets Orioles yesterday. In fact, I watched it today. Actually, you watched that game? I watched on replay watch today. It was on replay today. <laughs> so you, you, you and two other people. <laughs> yeah, it was on replay today. And um, they bunt uh, Cabrera. Oh, yeah. Cabrera bunts, and and the pitcher is a Brock. The, the pitcher makes it was the, bro- the Blyer. Blyer. The yeah, pitcher Blyer. catches it in the air. It really didn't look like a trap. He caught it in the air, I mean, without a doubt. But even then, that was a non-replayable thing. So they could not have checked for a trap in that situation. So it's kind of interesting that, boy, I didn't know that baseball had these little um, uh, loopholes. Or, yeah, exact qualifications when it comes to, to replay. So, But to, to Mark's point, that's why there's no good dust-ups, like an Earl Weaver dust-up or a well, Lupinella dust-up. In or the minor leagues, remember that guy? Wally Backman. No, it wasn't Wally Backman. The guy who was in the Braves minor leagues who like started throwing and stuff all over the field. Yeah, I mean, you're, they're, they're not going to have that because... Well, well, you could because so many of us have argued that replay is wrong. <laughs> it's Absolutely. like, you didn't see what you just saw. That wasn't what you saw, you know? Like, football announcers tell us all the... Like, there are these great announcers in football who love to tell us what we just saw. Then the replay goes and shows completely different from what they right. said, but they make it to prove their point. Like, I see, you see that? They said, it's like, that's not what's happening. You're just trying to make it up. By saying it's so doesn't mean it's so. Phil Wellman yeah. was the guy. And they give you the angle from the uh, satellite up. And right, through. right. You know, so. but you know, Chris, you got to start playing the all in the family. That, you know, those were the days. <laughs> you know, it, and if you do, I, I get. It, I'm not asking you, uh, but if you could ever play the um, the uh, re- the rerun of '73 of Secretariat winning uh, the Belmont, it's one of the greatest calls. One of the greatest things you're ever going to listen to. Um, yeah, I, I, again, again, it's a wonderful, wonderful race call. Uh, he went, like I said, he won by 31, but just the way uh, it was called by Chick Anderson, by all people. <laughs> In the background, stuff like that, but it really is wonderful. But um, yeah, um, the betting is going to, um, the, as far as Jersey, as soon as Murphy, the governor Murphy signs off, uh, Mammoth is set up, there's a whole bunch of other places set up, and they are going to be doing college sports, which I'm telling you is going to kill <laughs> the betting. Well, uh, no, no, I heard though that some states you can't bet on certain sports. I'm talking just a little bit south of us. I know that. Did you hear that though, Dave? That like what is it? New- until recently, in New York. I heard this on the fan before. In New York, you couldn't bet on fantasy golf. What? Who the hell bets on? Fantasy <laughs> <laughs> Who's betting on golf? <laughs> I mean, how about fantasy yeah, walking fantasy across Hempstead Turnpike? <laughs> <laughs> That's enough. <laughs> Who's thinking about? Oh, hey, Chris, I don't know. Chris, if you did or Queens Boulevard too. Either one. It's like it's like that should be the triple crown. If you can make it across Hempstead Turnpike, Queens Boulevard, and find some other place where you get killed, the pedestrian alley. Mm-hmm. Especially if you're in front of a Chinese restaurant. The, the, oh, no, the, no, the no, train no. tracks, they railroad across. That's if you're a cat. Oh no, no. Well, no, no, no. and either, Chris, I got to ask you. Do you have something to do with the Daily News? They dropped horse racing uh, four days ago. Really? Well, they're they've gone behind a paywall. So. Okay, because they got rid of the mighty Quinn, who had a forty-nine year. Oh yeah. I mean, again, he, he was up in that whatever. Like, forty. He had a forty-nine. You know, I can get the mighty Quinn on the. Ra- I can get him on the show because his brother used to work for my father-in-law, so I can definitely get him on the show. Him, in fact, his brother went to my wedding, so yeah, I can definitely get him right now. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy Quinn. Yeah, no, bro. I mean that, that's a great idea, but I, again, I don't know if he's going to burn any bridges and stuff like that. Well, he'll talk about Rosedale. And all the guys that you know. Oh, yeah, the the bar, <laughs> yeah. He, he grew up in Rosedale. Yeah, I think so. But the, who's that actor? Totoro, John Totoro, Nick Totoro. They're from Rosedale. Well, the Totoros are the first cousins of my former spo- sports talk co-host Mike Ewald. Actually, Mike Ewald used to host the show with me. The Totoros are his first cousins. They were at his wedding. I was at Mike's wedding as well. Uh-huh. As was uh, Michael Anthony and um, a couple other people. Rob Leonard. His best. Uh, didn't he uh, play a Hispanic guy in a TV show? Uh, um, speak, speaking of which, I tuned in a oh, little bit Nicholas early. Oh, Nicholas yes. Yeah, yeah. I, speak, I, I tuned in a little bit early there. I, I, I kept telling Dasa, 
he got to play the Macarena. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know. But you know, you guys never listen to me. That's all I can tell you. Yeah. Uh, anybody watch the uh, the Yankee game last night? With never listen to us. That's kind of yeah. What, that was kind of you. yeah. I was watching it. No, how about the kid that? Uh, oh, that was the, so nice. The kid caught a foul ball and then made a handmade sign about Judge, and then they they kept panning to him. Panning to, and he was up again. He wasn't uh, in box. He was up uh, with his, I guess, with his grandfather, or whatever. And he kept, they, and then all of a sudden, he hit the home run, and everything, uh, all the attention, proper attention, was paid to the young man because he was jumping around. Then he went back to his grandpa. <laughs> now it was, it was just a wonderful, it was just a wonderful uh, thing that went on. Did he get? Did he get the ball? Or how that? No, he was up in the deck. But yeah. you know, it was every time Judge got up. Something you know, I guess yeah. it wasn't home run. And then when we went to the extra innings, um, again they panned to the kid. Then he hit it, and then you saw the kid's eyes light up on Christmas morning. And he did, you know, he had the sign, and he ran back to his grandfather like I did it. And the, the people around him were, you know, patting him on the back. But like I said, it was just one of the, uh, just you know, it was what it was. So as far as the beautiful Belmont Park, I hope to justify wins. I've told you guys many times over. Um, the horse that gets out to the lead, all he's got to do is kick a little bit of sand and loam back into the uh, the trailers, and he's going to probably going to he's definitely going to go out for the lead. There might be one or two that want to outrace him, which is fine as long as he's established himself on the rail. And when it turns for home, we're going to know. And the horses, I actually, in fact, um, uh, I like a horse, uh, but it, what, what do you call it? Uh, tenfold. He's a real long shot. Um, what do you call it? Uh, uh, Richie used to uh, pick Dino Rosso for the um, Kentucky Derby, and Dino Rosso's got a very good chance also. I'm just talking about long shots because uh, Justify is probably going to go off four to five, which means if you bet two, if you bet two, you're going to get 380. So it's uh, just enjoy the day. There's some wonderful races ahead. Of, uh, absolutely fantastic races ahead of time if you got a chance to watch it. Uh, the only lock that I like was the one I picked uh, for the Belmont, uh, for the uh, Kentucky Derby, was Bolt Dioro. He's running two races prior to uh, the, Bel- uh, the Belmont. So, um, and again, like I said, just enjoy the day from what it is. It really is a wonderful, it's majestic. And you know what the sad thing is? Come the next day, no one's going to remember anything. <laughs> but I think, is it the 150th running? 150th, yeah. yes. Which they should be making more of a big thing about. Uh, well, the only reason I saw that was because there's a. I was watching News 12 this morning, and the woman who makes the hats, she's a millinery, as they call it, for the hats for all of the Triple Crown. She's based on 34th Street in Manhattan. Uh, Christine Moore? Christine's her first oh. name. And she, yeah, Christine A. Moore. And uh, she makes all the hats. And the reasons, the way she makes the hats are so you could watch the races. So they're built a certain way and they go with the part of your hair so you don't miss a, any of the action. Kind of interesting. August Belmont will be proud. Yeah. Uh, other than that, gentlemen, have yourself a nice evening. You too. All right. Thank there you. goes Dave from Franklin Square. And let me give a more hearty opening. Uh, welcome to Mr. Trisha Hamilton. Oh, how you guys doing? How you guys doing? We, uh, got a, we got a big series coming up starting tomorrow. Well, it's not big. <laughs> when one team is doing good, the other <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> hey, don't I'm takes... really looking forward to this. And they're saying Cespedes might play tomorrow. So. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Well. This might be his first game okay, back. Okay, because yeah. Blog didn't have him play. All right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay, so yeah. hopefully we get something shaky. They just got to score runs. That's it. Their pitching, the, the pitching is, fine. is fine. The pitching is fine. Uh, no runs. You got to get runs. I mean, you know, so hopefully just... Cespedes we talked about that. Or, or do, does something. Does something. I mean, the f- I love Wheeler doing well. I Wheeler's love doing Matt's good. doing well. You know, DeGrom and Syndergaard don't have to worry about. Yeah. And then the f- and I, I think Lugo and Gazelman have some really good stuff. Oh, yeah, so, definitely. Yeah, definitely. You know, it's just the fact these other guys they bring in, these other relievers are just dumpster fires. Yeah, Robles. Just, you know, and, Robles. Um, <laughs> Robles. <laughs> and still should be hanging out with Gretel. I mean, come on. <laughs> in the oven. Yeah. 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 Oh. The dumpster yeah. fire. Good God. It's just, it's terrible. Yeah. So. But the big witch. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so, so right off the bat, we got... Tanaka versus DeGrom. Yeah, we're, yep. Yeah, yeah right we have discussed. Discuss. Wait, till, oh, wait till you see Sunday night. He was in the bathroom. Sunday night. <laughs> Sunday is who? Uh, is it um, Severino and Syndergaard? Yeah. Uh, that's a big game. That's so who fun. pitches Saturday? Wheeler? No, it's Mats oh, and, Matt and German. German, yeah. Loss. Okay. So, so do you feel confident going against us uh, with Tanaka? <laughs> no, I'm just asking with Tanaka, uh, Cameron. Yeah, I feel good. You feel I good? Feel, yeah. Okay. I feel good. 
And it's based on the way the Mets office yeah, exactly. offense has been lately. Okay. <laughs> you, you know the ground should probably have about twelve wins right now, right? Oh yeah, yeah. He's yeah. four. Yeah. He's yeah. four. No, one point four. Look at his, his ERA. Oh my god, one point four nine. I, I think he hasn't didn't... given up a run in about forty something innings. I think. I think so. Last time he gave up a run was, um, I believe, when he got hurt. That was the last time. So he didn't get hurt that game, did he? Did he give up one run?